one area of Kalman syndrome that keep that keeps coming up in my conversations I have with people with Kalman syndrome or HH is the age they get diagnosed. And it does seem quite difficult for some of us to get diagnosed at the correct age. It doesn't help that Kalman syndrome is a very rare condition. The levels of are said to be about 1 in 4,000. That's the only figures we can go by at the moment. There's no reason to doubt them at the moment. But it, some of us do seem to have a problem of trying to get the right diagnosis from the GPs at the right age. Some of us can go into our 20s or even 30s before we get the correct diagnosis. Sometimes you can go to GP at 14, 15, they just say, late developer, late bloomer, send us away, come back in a year, six months, a year, two years. And sometimes this can get quite difficult because at that sort of age you do not want to go and see your GP in the first place and certainly not talk about something as fundamental as, as puberty. And, if, and you might be so embarrassed to actually go and do it. But there's talking to the experts here in the United Kingdom, the peak, the best age at the moment they think is 14 for the women and 15 for the men. So if somebody has not started puberty at all, I no signs at all, for men 15, women 14, they should be referred to an endocrinologist. So if we've got, so you go to the GP first, and they should get referred on to the endocrinologist, preferably either a paediatric endocrinologist, or better still, a reproductive endocrinologist. They then can do all the necessary tests to see whether this is just just constitutional delay of growth, like delayed puberty, or whether it is a case of Kalman syndrome or HH. There is an argument that delayed puberty and Kalman syndrome are the same disorder. They're just completely different at the ends of the spectrum. That delayed puberty is a very, very mild case of Kalman syndrome, and Kalman syndrome is at the complete other end of the spectrum. There's a good genetic reason for this, which I can go into one day, but just a little bit too long-winded for a five-minute video, but there is good reason to suggest that is that Kalman syndrome is not a specific condition. It actually represents a broad range of symptoms, where some people have more severe symptoms than others. So it might be, or quite possibly, that delayed puberty is just shows one end of the spectrum, where Kalman syndrome, with no puberty at all, no sense of smell, is the severe end of the spectrum. So, so really, if you go to GP at 15 with no sense of smell at all and no puberty, that really should highlight them and say, well, maybe there's something wrong here and should get referred to an endocrinologist for a more thorough workup, more thorough examination, and hopefully then you can start treatment a lot earlier. Because one common form or one common theme I ever speak to when, when I speak to people about Kalman syndrome is the earlier you start treatment, it sometimes helps both the physical and the psychological development of that person. Because the earlier you start treatment, you're less likely to feel isolated from your peer group, and you actually know about the condition, so it's a recognised condition. You're not the only person in the world with Kalman syndrome, so you're not the only person not going through puberty. You've got, you can put a name to condition, which does help some people, that they actually know there's something definitely wrong. They've got a name for it, and they've got treatment. And it actually helps people to know that... Oh yeah, okay, it's a condition, it's not a very nice condition to have, but at least I'm not alone in having this, and the doctors know about it, and they're being treated. A person with Kalman syndrome HH is never going to go through totally normal puberty, because they're not going to have, well, certainly with the men, they're never going to have testicular growth. If you have testosterone, all you're doing is giving all the other signs of puberty, the growth, the muscle not muscle build, the sexual drive, libido, energy levels, but it's never going to give you testicular, testicular growth, but it's going to give you all the other signs that you need. And you do need to have testosterone from the, from the age of 15. It's a very important hormone. It's not vital. You can live without testosterone. It's not, it's not vital for life, but it does give you a far better sense of well-being and, well, steadiness, really. And also the very important function of testosterone, which I'm going to mention later in a different video, is bone density, bone growth. So even if you, do, if you, even if you don't take it for the male sexual function side, you really should have to take it for the bone density, bone strength side. So that's all I'm going to try and say, I'm going to do a nice short video, is age of diagnosis should be 15 for the boys, 14 for the women. If no signs of puberty started by then, speak 
specialist medical advice, not just a GP, but go on to the consultant. There are minor associated symptoms to see with Kalman syndrome and HH, which authors should highlight to people as well. So if you've got no sense of smell or a reduced sense of smell, that should highlight the duck GP. Um, it's also linked with some people who have sensory nerves for nerve sensory deafness in one ear or two ears, so either got reduced hearing or deafness in one ear. Um, for the men, undescended testes at birth, which is common for other situations, it, it happens anyway, but with men with certain forms of Kalman syndrome, it's actually quite, quite common to get the undescended testes at birth. So if you get that plus the hearing, plus no puberty at 15, or you've got a family history of people with nerve deafness or infertility or delayed puberty, it all, it all should link together and give the GP thinking, I shouldn't really send this person away. I should refer this to an endocrinologist. Because I do think the worst thing to say to a 14-year-old girl or 50-year-old boy is, oh, you're just a late developer, late bloomer, go away, come back in a year or so, or six months a year, and we'll see then. I think that crucial period of 14, 15, 16 you get so much physical growth and emotional growth, the longer you leave it before you start puberty, it is very difficult to catch up those years afterwards. And I speak to some people with Kalman syndrome who feel they never can catch up those developmental years in their early teens or late teens. It's not just the physical side, but it's, all, it's the emotional side of physical interaction and emotional interaction with other people, to where you start forming relationships, emotional bonds, and if you start to miss out on that, it's sometimes difficult for some people to catch up afterwards. So I always think early diagnosis is the, is the key. Once you're diagnosed, you can start treatment, and some people can move on quite happily, because Kalman syndrome itself is not a life-threatening condition, but I think it's more the fact when people don't know what it is and feel they are the only person in the world with it, that it can cause problems. As soon as they know know what it is, there's other people other people with the condition, they can talk to other people online, meet them face to face with it, go through the same things, they feel slightly better about it and say, well, they can try and then get on with their lives and feel a little bit more better. So I think that's all for the time being. Thank you.